day. My name's Carrie. My name's Jen. And on today's show, we're going to talk about whose side are you on? We'll be right back after this. every day so glad that you've tuned in yeah. we are headed to Nashville you're still on the road with us we're in Tennessee and uh, last week we talked about um, not judging things like not judging a book by its cover essentially right what's in what's a name? in a name and this week we've decided to talk about something a little bit different um, we were here in Tennessee during the United States election for new president Donald Trump and it was interesting to say the least. Oh yes, because people are very vocal down here yeah. about whose side are they on and why. And what's interesting is if you were to look at a map of the country and who voted for uh, Hillary Clinton and who voted for Donald Trump, uh, you would see that the middle was all red. And so they predominantly voted for Donald Trump. And so uh, we got up for breakfast the next morning because we went to bed um, not knowing who was ahead and who was not ahead and not really having a particular side just knowing well and plus we're Canadians so what do we really really know and I, I about American politics and the fact that we don't live here so we're not rubbing shoulders with people and, and what they value and uh, so we sort of you know I got up in the middle of the night and I actually checked to see who had won I was like huh Mr. Trump won and the reason I'm choosing to say Mr. Trump or Mrs. Clinton is because it's actually a term of respect and it's so important that when we talk about people that we actually whether we agree with people or we don't agree with people it always always has to be done respectfully and with honor because that person is actually made in the image of God and so when we address people whether we agree with them or we don't agree with them you are always to do it honorably and respectfully and and so and I believe Paul says that in the book of Acts when he's being accused and he speaks against the high priest and uh, somebody comes and slaps him and says, you don't talk like that to the high priest. And Paul said, oh, if I had known that, I wouldn't have spoken that way. And so there's this idea of, of when you engage people, whether you agree with them or not, and you can even passionately disagree with someone, but you always do so respectfully and honorably. So when we say, you know, Mr. Trump or Miss Clinton or Mrs. Clinton, or you use their whole name rather than um, just sort of, and even the way that you say someone's name also shows uh, respect. And actually it brings you honor as well, showing that you are willing uh, to have dialogue, like an intelligent dialogue. And I think that's half it, because when you get really upset or demeaning towards people, you actually turn people off and they don't want to have those conversations with you. But if you prove respectful and that you're someone who, who listens, then I believe people are actually willing to engage in conversation with you about things that you don't necessarily see eye to eye on. So woke up in the middle of the night, saw that Mr. Trump had won the election. I just sort of went, oh, oh, okay. And so we went to breakfast the next morning and um, one of the gentlemen sitting sort of at the table beside us said, was like celebrating. Was celebrating and, and it kind of spoke with everyone like, I bet you, oh, he came over and said, I think you can see I'm pretty happy about, happy about the results of the election. And then Jen said, well, can you enlighten us? Like, tell us why you're happy that Mr. Trump is, is the president-elect and, and, and what are your reasons for being so happy, essentially? Yeah. And he was so happy to indulge us. Oh, so happy. So happy. At one point, his wife is like, now come along. Like, let them eat their breakfast. Eat. And, and he's like, no, they, they, they asked. asked me. And we did ask. And I turned around and said, no, no, we asked. And, and, he was, and he explained why. Like, it was very interesting to hear 
why he had voted for Mr. Trump. And we're not, and to say like, yes, we're, we're Canadian, we don't really know what's going on down here. That's not to say that we don't realize that the heads of state and the, and the leaders of countries don't significantly impact people's oh, yes. lives and don't significantly impact people in other countries. Like we recognize that our relationship to the United States is Oh, it's so key important. for so many reasons, and we both influence each other. So that's not to say we don't recognize the importance of yes. it and the importance of what people's political platforms mean down the road. Yeah. So that's not to say that we're not naive to that, but understanding individual people's perspectives, yes. that we didn't understand. So, so that's why we asked that guy. And so that was very interesting, just to hear his perspective about why he had voted voted for Mr. Trump. And then we went down the road a little bit um, and stopped actually at a sign at the Smoky Mountain entrance sign. And another gentleman, you know, we took their pictures and that's what you do when you're on vacation, by the way. You just take other people's photos when they ask where you offer. And so he, we took theirs and they took ours. And then I said, would you, could we ask you a question? I said, we're from, we're from Canada. We're trying to understand why someone, you know, um, might have voted one way or might have voted another way. Just talk to us about the platforms. And he basically said the same thing that the other guy said. Now you have to understand we are in like in the middle states where every where they voted not I want to say well seventy percent voted at least Trump. in Tennessee, which is where we were, voted uh, for Mr. Trump or Republican. Um, and he basically said the same thing, like, and he gave solid reasons from their perspective of why they voted that way. And it was just really interesting. And at one point we said to each other, we need to hear from the other side to hear, well, why they would have voted um, for Mrs. Clinton. And, and so, but we really were just getting the one side mm -hmm. of the story, but it was a very interesting side because everything on Facebook was like, trashing Mr. Trump and what is going on and yet there were people who solidly believed that this was the right thing and and sometimes the perspective for both they seem legitimate yes right and and both people we spoke with brought up issues from both candidates past mm -hmm. they would downplay one and they would emphasize the other yes. negatively and yet would be dismissive of the of the one candidate's past. Yes. You know, and, and, and to say, well, if you tell one lie, does that make you a liar? And to, making broad statements in order to, um, like said, so they were trying to say, well, these morals and values are really important to me. And therefore, if there is a, a blight in the person's character, mm -hmm. it's okay as long as they are supporting these morals and values that, that are in keeping with my own. They yes. were willing to overlook certain things. Yes. And so people are, are super passionate, very passionate down here and very vocal. Yes. Like on the sides of vehicles would have like whatever uh, party they were supporting would have that party's name on it. Mm -hmm. And it was just really, really interesting. So as we go to commercial break, I want you to think about, has there been a time where I've been super passionate about something because it reflected what I wanted? Okay? Because there's a difference between the things that you want and the things that are best. So think about it, and we'll be right back. Jeff Weston. Yeah, man. You're building a brand new beautiful website. What? Aren't you? No. Am I? Oh, you're a terrible actor. What? This is where acting comes into play. Oh, I didn't know we were acting. You're supposed to act. Okay, fair enough. All right. yeah, I'm building a really cool website. Are you building a really cool website? You need hosting. One of the things about a hosting account is you don't want to have limitations put on your website. It's true. How much hard drive space do you have? How many email accounts? How many domains can point to it? Well, we've got an amazing deal for you. For a very limited time, cat5.tv slash dreamhost. For just $5 and a bit of change per month, you are going to get unlimited website hosting, unlimited email accounts on that hosting uh, service. You are also going to receive a free domain name. Ooh. So your own .com. Nice. To put that amazing website that you've been working on it's on true. there. If you run, if you want to build a WordPress site, fine. Sign up. Cat5.tv slash dreamhost. Just don't put Panama Papers on it. Just don't do it. But hey, uh, 
It's a great deal, folks. Best deal you're going to find. $5 and change per month. Go to cat5.tv slash dreamhost. Hey, and welcome back to New Every Day. We're talking about a very heated topic, and that's um, the election that occurred in the United States on um, November 8th. Mm-hmm. Right, it was the 8th. It was the 8th. Yep. Um, and Jen, you left us with a question. So, Well, the question that. was, have you ever been so passionate about something because it was best for you, but not necessarily thinking about how it would play out in uh, the rest of for the rest of society and it's very interesting because when you get when we got talking with those people it was very much like well they have the same morals and values as I do or they <laughs> <laughs> or um, well this is what I want and where I see us going right and what we like what we need but it was from their perspective yeah and, but but what would have happened if they were let down? Right. And 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 you asked a good question um, this morning to me, Jen. Like, well, how do you act, how do you respond when you don't actually get what you want? Um, what what should your response be? Right. And I look in the Book of James. It's like, where does quarreling come? Does it not come from when you are striving for selfish things? Yes. But people's motivation for voting a certain way doesn't always come from selfish motives. They want what's best for their country. They want what's best for their family. You know, but then what do you do when your side doesn't win? Or what do you do when your team doesn't win? I know. And it's like, well, what do you do? Like, how, how do you lose well? How do you still honor um, the other side? And really what it comes down to is not, I know in Canada when Prime Minister uh, Trudeau was voted in, uh, lots of people rose up against that and said, oh no, like our country's going downhill and what's going to happen? And it's like all this uncertainty and oh no. And it really comes World down to we are actually called as believers to pray for the people in government. And you look at that in the book of Romans. You can look at that uh, in the epistles. Um, I want to say, in, yeah. And so it's like we're actually called to pray for those who are in authority over us that God would move in their heart. And ultimately, that's what we want. Because a country that is guided by a godly man or a godly woman really is in the right place. And and what is interesting is Stephen Kirsch Chapman, who is probably one of my favorite all-time ever singers. I have pretty much everything he's ever recorded. And then I've been to his concerts, which are excellent. But I just believe, anyways, he's a good man. He's got some solid lyrics. Anyway, so he wrote this song on, on and he put it on Facebook. And it's, I believe it's called, uh, I'm not even sure if he wrote it, wrote a name for it. Uh, but he basically says, you know, everybody's freaked out about the upcoming election. And, and it's interesting, the number of, of I want to say, preachers that I heard that actually reflect what Stephen Kirsch Chapman is saying in these lyrics, but it says like this, I hear everybody talking on the right and on the left, they're holding out their promises while we all hold our breath, and if I didn't know better, I would be scared to death, but God is on the throne. I know that it all matters, and there's so much at stake, and I know we all need wisdom for decisions we must make, but there's only one who's making promises that he won't break, and he is on the throne. He is faithful and true. Everything he says he'll do and everything we go through, he will go with us. All the kingdoms of man are in the palm of his hand. So I will not fear. I will say it loud and clear. So my own heart, and that's, that's so cool in the song. So my own heart will hear it. God is on the throne. Well, I've got my fears and worries like everybody else. I love this country and it's broken and it's in desperate need of help. So I'm praying to the one who has the power to make us well because he is on the throne. Kingdoms rise and kingdoms fall. Only one stands through it all. It's the kingdom of God, of the God of grace and love. And I'm not worried because I know God is on the throne. And when I first listened to this song, I played it over and over and over and over and over again because there's so much truth in it. That whole idea of we need to declare out who God is. We need to because He says, like, I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray to the one who doesn't break His promises. And it's like we don't 
you know, God puts people in power. Mm -hmm. Our responsibility as believers is actually to, to pray for our leaders, whether we agree with them or not. But I know uh, even for, uh, I went to a um, citywide prayer um, for our little town that we live in. And basically it's believers coming together at City Hall, praying for our mayor, our province, and our country. And we prayed that God would put men and women of wisdom around our leaders which is such a really cool thing to do like okay god you put people in place around our leaders protect them from the enemy help them to make the right decision the right decision whether it is you know the easiest decision or the toughest decision help them to make the right decision help them up uh, would you protect who they listen to like yeah. we got talking about rehoboam this morning the king in the old testament who was younger when he came to power yes and there were advisors from his father's reign yes who were advising him to you know partner with the people do what's good for them and they will serve you forever but yeah. his younger advisors who he chose to listen to in the end gave him not good advice and said no you you tell them that you could crush them with your pinky finger and put give them forced labor and that so they will bow down to you and you will be the ruler instead of listening to the older and wiser um advisors he chose to go with his friends and it turned out poorly for him because he wasn't listening to the people so yeah I want to I want to pray that there are good wise people who are going to help mr. Trump make good decisions yes and and right decisions that are going to help the country yeah and that you know God can redeem any situation oh yes and that doesn't mean that we've become pacifist and not stand up for what's right. I think of like Dietrich Bonhoeffer, right? He knew right. that what was going on was not right and chose to partner with people to stand up against Hitler. But I like the lyrics in there that says, what are you going to do with your own heart? Yes. If I am not in agreement, there's there's conscientious objection, yeah. which I think is important. That if, if a ruler is asking you to do something that is morally wrong, that you actually stand up yeah. and you don't go along with that. Yes. And, and I think we have to ask God, well, what am I going to go to the wall for? And what am I not going to go for, to the wall for? That you have to conscientiously object to some things. But in other things, I think it's okay that we actually um, submit to the authority in, in the little things. And choose in your heart how to respond with grace and love. And, and in your daily decisions to make choices that honor God and what's going to be best for other people. Yes, and uh, what's interesting is Mel Gibson has a new movie coming out, Hacksaw Ridge. Mm, I don't remember. Robbie, can you like for us um, the name of that? But what's interesting, it's a story about a conscientious objector who wants to go to war. And he basically says, I'm going to save people. And you're kind of like, whoa, how do you go to war to save people? And, he, and like basically he was going in and saving people who were hit and hurt as a medic. As a medic. And it's he like- he didn't want to carry a gun. Yes, because he didn't want to contribute to death. He wanted to, to contribute to life. And it's like, okay, in whatever situation we find ourselves in, how are we going to contribute? And we watched the news this morning and riots were going on in Washington uh, of people who were upset because Mr. Trump won. And we just sort of went, this is not the That's right not way. That's not the right answer. This is not the right way. And I'm thinking about Martin Luther King, you know, and peaceful how protests and what when he did protests, they were peaceful, right? They were peaceful. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, how, how do we voice our... Um, discontent, that's not the right word, our disagreement in an honorable way. And it always comes back to dear Lord Jesus, and I'm just thinking about the guy from Hacksaw Ridge, how as a medic he went in to save. So in whatever situation you find yourself in, how do you go in to save it? Because that's actually, as, as followers of Christ, that's what we have to do, actually. We are to go in to redeem situations, not to contribute um, to I want to say the chaos and the war, yeah. but we are to we are little Christians. We are to go in and redeem the situation. Because I, sorry, no, go ahead. I do believe in a God of second chances. Yes, and I can look back in times in my life where I know I've been given a second chance um, to make a better decision 
with my life or um, I and I do believe that God gives leaders second chances too in his mercy like and you don't want to enable people who are making bad choices and and we're kind of jumping from like politics to to real life but you know when I am treating in the hospital like the drug addict who is narcotic dependent and you know have, have they've made bad decisions am I going to continue to enable their their addiction or if they you know drunk driver comes in and, and they're reaping the consequences of, of being a drunk driver and they've gotten to an accident am I going to you know we still treat that person we still treat them with love and respect and then mm-hmm. say you know let this be the first day of you making good good choices i want to put the things in your hands to help you right. make good decisions help you make wise choices to put people around you to make those good decisions yes but i still love and care for you right and so carrie in the midst of i want to say the chaos and the noise that's going on in that uh, that patient's life she's going in to redeem the situation right? So she isn't going and saying, oh, you should be doing this. You should be doing this in a negative. It's like, no, let me bring love. Let me bring options. Let me bring support because that is her role as a, as a nurse, right? So that's our role as Christians. Yeah. And so when we talk about whose side are you on, it really is you're on the side of, of Christ. Right. No matter what happens, God is on the throne. And how do you bring love and grace and redemption into situations rather than contributing to the disunity, discord, which actually causes uh, things to come apart and rebellion and separation? Because that's not what God has called us to. So we're just going to take a moment and we're going to pray and ask God to help us to be, um, I want to say, people of people of redemption, people of I don't know people of salvation like just bringing the good news of Christ into situations so let's pray Heavenly Father I thank you so much that you are on the throne and Lord uh, no matter what side wins really our responsibility as believers is to be Christ representative so how do we bring grace and redemption into situations and Lord I know there's people watching right now and they're at work or they're in families and they're just really struggling because things are not going their way. Lord, I ask even now that you would speak into their life about how to bring grace and love and redemption into situations. Um, And so only we can do that through the power of Jesus Christ alive in us and the Holy Spirit moving through us. And so, Father, help us to fully rely on you. Help us be representatives of you uh, no matter what situation we find ourselves in. Lord, help us to be careful about choosing sides. And if you are calling us to do that, Lord, help us to honor uh, the other side. So, Father, help us to be people of honor and integrity. Help us to honor you. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thanks, Jen, for that prayer. And um, if you are not connected with a local church to... um, to be with a group of people who can love and support you, we just encourage you to do that. Mm-hmm. So check out the churches, the um, churches in your community who can support you if you're going through a tough time. We encourage you to go uh, focus on thefamily.com or focus on thefamily.ca mm-hmm. and check out those who can support you if you're facing a tough decision and looking for wisdom. You can go to Godly Counselors. So, anyways, just want to throw that out there. We hope that you have an awesome week. Thanks for tuning in as we travel across Tennessee. And we look forward to seeing you next week. Bye. See you later.